Good morning, JCC Dallas. I'm Daniel Taylor, and you're watching Wake Up and Get Wealthy. Um, my special guest today is uh, Brett Stanley with Baylor Scott and White Health, and she'll be joining us soon. We are talking about kitchen and cooking hacks today, so some simple um, t tips and things for you to um, do in your own kitchen. All right, let's see if she's on. And she's going to be joining us. Okay. Hey. Hi, Brad. Maybe. Are we sound check, video check? Looks like we're frozen. Uh -oh. Is this working? Can you hear me? I can hear you. It was a little frozen. Can you hear me? Can you see me? I can see yes, you now. Yes, now I can. Can you see me? Hello. Hi. Yes, it's a little delayed, but uh, okay. I think we're good. Okay, good. Well, welcome. Thank you. It's so good to be back here. I've missed Wake Up and Get Wealthy. This is great. It's always great to have you on with us, Brett. And I'm really excited to talk about um, our kitchen and cooking hacks, um, both of us being um, pro home cooks, I guess, um, and uh, just talking about things that, you know, help make uh, life a little easier for those in the kitchen. I mean, a lot of people, I think, are intimidated um, with cooking and um, trying to make it healthy. And we're not just talking about making things healthy, guys. We're, we're also talking about th making things easier. So that's really what we want to talk about um, today. because. I think um, cooking at home at all is just going to be healthier than um, eating out. No offense to restaurants. I love restaurants. I love eating out. But um, I think it's just starting cooking at home a few meals a week um, really helps all around. Yeah, no, I agree. I mean, full-time working mom uh, to a five-year-old, I don't have a ton of time. And so – you know, there are just some little things that I've discovered that really help um, throughout the throughout the week um, to save throughout the month. Um, so for me, like you said, it's all about ease and it's about making things, making my life easier um, so that, uh, you know, I can I can feed my kids some delicious food, too. And I will say, too, you know, the one thing that um, that I like to do is actually get him involved uh, in cooking mm. and, um, you know, give him a, a little plastic child knife that I ordered off Amazon and allow him to cut some of the veggies, um, cut fruit, you know, things like that. And I actually find that when I give him that ownership and he gets to do that, um, that he's more likely to eat the food that we cook because he's made it, right? So I guess right off the bat, that's one of my biggest hacks is, you know, giving ownership to my five-year-old. Yeah. Um, because um, he likes being involved and there are some just simple things that he can do with me in the kitchen, which is fun for both of us. Yeah, I think getting anyone in the family involved in cooking um, is, is great. Of course, I don't like sharing my kitchen, so that's a whole different conversation. But uh, I know that my mom and my grandmothers both, or all of them, um, got me involved in doing some things in the kitchen, which, is, which was um, great. So I learned stuff early on. Um, okay, so we're going to share our top three, each of us. Um, we both prepared top three um, hacks. And, um, you know, Brad, I'm going to let you go first with your number one. And if you're ready, or I can go first. And then um, I'll do mine. Yeah, absolutely. So... One of my favorite hacks is use the freezer. I am a big fan of the freezer, and um, I was a little intimidated to start freezing things at first um, because I thought, thought you know, I would maybe forget about them and, and all that kind of stuff. But um, I use the freezer for a lot of things. And my number one thing, and I love telling everyone who will listen to about this, is to freeze things like tomato sauce. Um, so at home, it's just myself and my kid, right? He's five. So we buy these big jars of tomato sauce, right, for pasta or for pizza. We we don't often use the whole jar. We never use the whole jar, actually. Right. And so what I like to do is I take these little silicone cups um, that I actually used uh, when I was making him baby food 
because I was one of those. Uh, I made my yeah. own baby food. A whole nother episode, right? Um, yeah. But so I'll take those silicone molds, I'll put the tomato sauce into those molds, right? Pop it in the freezer. Once it's frozen, you can pop out those uh, pucks of tomato sauce, put them in a Ziploc bag, and then I'll just take one of the pucks, put it in a saucepan when I need to heat it up. Um, if, you know, I just need like a little bit of tomato sauce for something, um, for pasta, for pizza, for Trader Joe's frozen cheese sticks, just to dip them, right? So yeah. um, that's probably my favorite thing to do. Grab one of those silicone molds, take something that, you know, you haven't used a lot of before it goes bad, pop it in the freezer. That's my best hack, I think. Yeah, I think, I think that's great. And I think freezing things um, so it doesn't go to waste is a wonderful thing. I hate wasting. It makes me feel ill if um, something goes to waste. So I think um, putting it in the freezer and being able to uh, use it again is a great hack. Um, I love that. Um, okay, so yeah. my number one um, is prep. Yes, tell it is prep. Okay. I think that, that um, you know, people watch cooking shows, I do, and they make it look super easy. What they're not seeing is that a lot of stuff is prepped in advance or is waiting there um, for them, like a pot of boiling water. So it's already going, so they just throw the pasta in. And I know that when I started cooking, what overwhelmed me was, you know, trying to do multiple things at one time. And so having everything, having all your pots and pans, your utensils, everything you're going to use to make this food is really important to have ready. Um, have the pot boiling with the water if you're going to make pasta. Um, have your, um, your ingredients already chopped up or diced up or whatever it needs to be. So that way it's already ready. So it's ready to go in the pan and you're not, you know, having to run back and forth and, and kind of, you know, panicking and, and frantic. Um, and again, just having everything ready, I think is important. Having a sharp knife as part of that prep. Definitely have a sharp knife. My mom always told me that. She's like, a dull knife is more dangerous than a sharp one. Um, so have the right things, too. And make sure that you, if it says you need a, a stock pot, make sure you have a stock pot. You know, don't just try to cram something into a, a tiny little, you know, um, saucepan if you don't have. Um, so make sure you have all the right things um, when you're, when you are cooking and make sure you have everything ready. Prep, prep, prep. Yeah, I think that's great advice because I, I often find myself just scrambling to like grab things, right? And it just makes me feel frantic. And then the joy of cooking is not joyful anymore. It's just stressful, <laughs> no. right? Um, no. So what I'm hearing you say is that I can have my five-year-old do all of the prep for me and then <laughs> throw everything in. Is that what you're saying? Well, maybe with his with his little plastic knife, yes. Um, <laughs> don't give him the chef's knife yet, but uh, yeah, yeah, no yeah. Chef's knife for him. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but no, I, yeah, I think yeah, really big, like zucchini and um, you know, often I'll find if he's like cutting, you know, a vegetable or a fruit or something that he hasn't tried before, he'll he'll try it while he's chopping it. Um, yeah. Again as he's doing it, right? So I think that's a really great way to get your kids to try new food too. Um, so have your kids help you prep, uh, prep so that you can have joy in cooking and not just uh, be frantic like I often am when I'm cooking. Yeah, no, and I think if you have, you know, someone, uh, if you have a significant other, if you have someone in your household too, I mean, you can always have a sous chef, someone who is um, getting everything ready for you while you're cooking. Again, for me, I'm kind of a loner in the kitchen, but, you know, that's just me. Um, yeah. Not everyone else is. <laughs> okay, so no one go to Daniel's house and help him. We'll just, <laughs> no, no, we'll no help. For the we'll come for the food. Eat the food. Um, yeah. Yeah, so along the same lines of, you know, the tomato sauce conserving, you know, something that you haven't used all of. Again, I'm a big fan of the freezer um, and using everything you have. So a lot of times I will go to the store and grab like a rotisserie chicken for the week um, because then I can just, you know, use that chicken for chicken salad or make like taquitos for my kid or tacos or whatever it is, throw it on salad, right? right. So you get that chicken for all different types of food throughout the week. Then what I like to do is save the, and I hate this word, carcass of the chicken, right? So the bones and everything like that. Um, and I will throw them in the Instapot and make my own bone broth. 
and it seems really intimidating, but it's actually pretty easy. Um, I may not do it the best way, but I just literally throw the bones and everything, the skin, everything into the, um, the Instapot, cover it with water. I'll add like a little salt, maybe some spices, and then put it on high pressure for two hours um, and just let it do its thing. And then you get homemade bone, bone broth. And so, yeah. um, you know, you're using every part of the chicken, right? And then what I like to do is either put that bone broth in like mason jars, right? Put them in my fridge or same thing, use those silicone molds um, and pour the bone broth into those molds. And then you have pucks to use for later, right? You can uh, put it in a coffee mug, heat up a puck and actually just drink it. Um, or you can heat it up and use it for rice. Um, I love cooking my rice in bone broth because I think it tastes a lot better. Um, yeah. Or use it for soup, right? So. Yeah, I, I totally agree with the fact that homemade stock broth tastes better. And a lot of um, canned stock or broth has a lot of sodium in it. Mm -hmm. Tons of salt. This, this pump in the... And a lot of soups that you buy over the counter also have a lot. So um, that in itself is it's, you're going to have more flavor um, doing it at home. Um, and you're going to kind of cut down on some of that salt content as well, uh, which I think is great. And I think, again, using the rotisserie chicken, a lot of people think, okay, I've got to do everything from scratch or not at all, which is, again, not, not the point. You know, there's a lot of semi-homemade things that you can do. Um, by getting something that's already prepared and then blending it into different dishes and things that you're making, um, it's a time saver, um, which we all could use. We're all busy, and, um, you know, it, it just helps us get through the week and things like that. When you have time, of course, yes, it's nice to roast a chicken yourself all the way, you know, and, and have the house smell like that and everything. Um, but uh, it's not necessary. It's not needed, you know, when you're when you're making things through the week. So I love it. Yeah, I will tell you, I've never roasted a, a chicken by myself. I have always gone to buy a rotisserie chicken. Um, I probably will never roast an entire chicken by myself, but, you know, we'll see. Only time will tell, it, I guess. It, it's just something that I do, like, I don't do it now because it's too hot. But uh, the, in the fall and the winter, it is something that I do. It's like a Sunday dinner to me, and um, uh, it's fairly simple. But, I mean, it is time-consuming, for sure. I mean, you have to give it the time it needs. Um, and so it's not a quick... It's not a quick thing. It is something I enjoy during that period of time. Yeah, so all of our, our viewers here can wait for an invitation to your house in the fall for homemade rotisserie chicken, right? That's yep. also what well, I Yeah, that's what yeah. we're doing. But we can't cook. We will not no, hear no, sushi. No, no, no. No, you um, can't help. Provide entertainment <clears throat> and uh, eat it's, rotisserie it's my It's my ADHD, Brett. I can't, like, when people are talking to me, I can't do two things at once. So if I'm cooking, I have to focus on cooking. If I'm driving, I have to focus on driving. I can't do two. I can't talk to anyone. I can't be distracted. So yeah. that's why. Very, very mindful of you. I love that. Yeah. yeah um, and it's also, speaking of which, it is my mindfulness time. It is my time to um, decompress. Um, being in the kitchen for me is like therapy um, most days. And, you know, um, Steven will say, my partner will say, oh, you, are you tired? You'll fly cooking. I'm like, I may be tired, but sometimes it's really therapeutic to get in the kitchen and cook. Yeah, so. I think that's awesome. Uh, you, you do that. It is not therapeutic for me. Um, <laughs> for me, it is more of a kind of a task. But, um, you know, like for me, crocheting is therapeutic, right? Which probably would not be therapeutic for you. Um, so well, it wouldn't. It wouldn't be therapeutic, and you wouldn't get anything attractive out of it, anything that you would want to keep in your home, so. Yeah, so you, we all have to find what, you know, works for us and uh, what kind of puts us into that headspace of mindful, you know, where you're just kind of in it, and you're really not thinking about anything else except for what you're doing, which I think is really great. So I love that you have found cooking for that. Yeah. My uh, tip, two is... Um, Talking about modifications, I already kind of segued into that, uh, modifications and um, seasoning. Um, but, you know, a lot of people will look at a recipe and say, well, I, it's not for me. Um, I'm a vegetarian. I'm a vegan. Um, but you can, you can do a lot with um, veggie stock. You know, you can make, we were just talking about making, you know, bone broth. Um, but you can make vegetable stock at home. Um, you can buy it. 
Um, you can get cream of celery instead of cream of chicken or, cream, you know, things like that. There's a lot of different things that you can use um, to, to modify. So don't be afraid to – don't turn down a recipe necessarily. I turned, um, you know, my chicken pot pie recipe into veggie pot pie, veggie chili, um, you know, losing the meat. And a lot of people think, well, then I have to use a meat substitute. I just – more vegetables and beans. And I think that that, you know, works really well. Not saying that you can't use a, a, a meat substitute. Um, but in my opinion, I'd rather have the vegetables. Um, I don't miss the meat when I make um, veggie chili. That's just me. Um, but my biggest thing with seasoning is too, is that um, you can always modify, do a recipe first, the first time, exactly the way the recipe says to do it, but then find from there where you can make adjustments. But usually recipes do have a blend of things that you do need. You need uh, the sugar content, salt content, acid, things that balance out the flavoring. So make sure that you, you know, appropriately put those things in, but um, then learn where you can, you know, if something tastes too salty to you or too sweet um, or too spicy, you can always kind of bring those things down. Um, and a lot of people will tell me, oh, well, I didn't use salt, but I put in some seasoning blend. I'm like, remember that it, that also has a lot of sodium in it. Most spice blends do. So you have to kind of look at the back of the container and see. Um, but like I said, I don't, don't be afraid to modify something or to, or to take those shortcuts. I never, I'm not a baker, so I never um, make crust. I buy the Pillsbury rollout, you know, crust uh, or filo dough or things like that out of the freezer. Um, I just, it's just something I don't enjoy. I don't enjoy cooking. I don't enjoy baking. So it's something that um, I just do, but I don't think it's a, no one really ever complains. If the, if the core ingredients are good, um, then, then those shortcuts aren't going to hurt anything. Yeah, and like a lot of times it's kind of what you have at home, right? Like sometimes you'll prepare for a recipe, you'll go to the grocery store, buy everything, right? But oftentimes that's not the case for me. Um, I'll just kind of see what I have at home. I, I I like to say like uh, a lot of times, especially when I'm nearing the end of like my food and it's kind of time to go to the grocery store, I like to pretend like I'm on chopped, right? And like see what I have and see what I can make <clears throat> from, you know, these four ingredients and you know, what, what I can do with them. Um, and a lot of times too, I'll just go to Google and you know, if it calls for something like um, cream of tartar or something like that, um, I'll Google and I'll say, you know, what's a good substitute for cream of tartar and just see what I have at home, right? Right. Um, because ideally it's great to prepare all this, get all your ingredients from the grocery store, but life, right? And so right. a lot of times I'll be at home, I'll want to make something, I don't have all the ingredients, but I have to find those modifications, right? Right, yeah. Well, I, I think that, um, you know, there's a lot of times that ingredient, there's a lot of recipes that call for um, ingredients that are expensive. Saffron, for instance. And, you know, I just use turmeric. Is it the same thing? Is it the same taste? No. And some of our chefy friends out there would be like, oh, you're killing me. It's not the same thing. But, um, you know, it works. Um, so, yeah, you could definitely Google things and find out what will work instead. Um, we were trying to find um, condensed milk. The other day for a drink, just a, it was just a, a lemonade summer concoction that we were going to make. And um, so we couldn't find that at Trader Joe's. So we got um, a can of uh, coconut milk. And so, you know, again, just something that will, will kind of do the job, give it a similar flavor. And I also love um, if I didn't plan and I just go to my pantry and see um, what I have, just creating something um you know, new, um, which is, which is cool. That will go into my next tip. So I'm going to stop there because I don't want to go too far. Okay. So my tip number three, again, has to do with the freezer. Um, you know, when I'm in a, a pinch or even when I'm not, I buy frozen food, right? Like frozen veggies, um, frozen fruit. I think frozen veggies are um, oftentimes just as good as fresh, right? They're, they're frozen at the peak of ripeness. So they maintain a lot of those nutrients in there. Um, so a lot of times I'll opt for frozen and I will just, you know, microwave them or put them on the stove or whatever. Um, again, it's not glamorous. It's not beautiful, um, but it does the job and, um, you know, add whatever seasoning I want to it. But I think um, we have this tendency to be maybe 
you know, shy away from frozen, um, but it can be a great addition to a meal. And, um, and I would just say too, like, you know, I think frozen is great if it's, you know, just the broccoli, it's frozen, right? When you look at like canned veggies, again, it can be great in a pinch, but you know, they do add a lot of times that extra sodium and, and things like that. So I'm not saying stay away from that, but just be mindful right. that, you know, the canned stuff is going to have the extra ingredients. A lot of times the frozen won't, and um, it can make for some really good, easy, very easy dishes. You know, I love roasting broccoli, um, but when, you know, I have a busy week and I need to make my kids something who loves broccoli, um, I'll just, you know, pop in some frozen broccoli and it's, it's great. Yeah. So, yeah. If frozen is better than canned, I mean, I, I do, I mean, there's some things that, you know, you hard to find, you know, um, that are, that are not in canned, but, um, I agree. And I think that, um, when they're frozen, you still get a lot of the nutrients out of it. It's canned. It's pretty much just, it's filler at that point. Um, but, uh, I, I totally agree with the, the using the frozen vegetables. And I also love the roasting, People don't, people underestimate roasting vegetables. A, it's quick um, and easy. You just throw a bunch of stuff on your sheet pan. You drizzle a little olive oil or, or whatever you want to use and some seasoning and you throw it in the oven for 20 minutes and you're done. You know, asparagus, broccoli, um, you know, there's lots of opportunity, uh, kale, you know, there's a lot of things you can do. Especially if you're not a huge, I'm not a big broccoli person, but I do like it roasted. Uh, Brussels sprouts are another great example of, um, you know, it, it's something that if you don't want to spend a lot of time um, doing anything else with it, roasting is a great option. Yeah, and uh, again, our, our chef friends would probably cringe, but I actually love burnt broccoli. Like, when you're mm. roasting it and, like, the little pieces burn. Um, oh, yeah, I love that. It's the best. Uh, not the most nutrient uh, dense because, you know, when you cook it that much, a lot of the nutrients are gone, but I love it. Um, yeah. that's one of my favorite parts of roasting broccoli, but I agree. You can, you know, you can put a bunch of different veggies on one pan and roast them and, and you have them for the week and it's great. Yeah. Um, so my final tip, um, is learn basic cooking techniques, um, that can be applied to sell recipes. So like that, we talked about creating something from the, from the pantry. If you know the difference between a saute and a sear, um, then you know the, what you can do with multiple different um, things. Um, and stock your pantry with things that you could, like tomato sauce, you know, crushed tomatoes, um, some of those canned goods. Um, make sure that you have and the frozen vegetables in your freezer. But stock your pantry in your freezer full of things that you could take out and, you know, do anything with. I also keep um, frozen shrimp, not cocktail shrimp, but broth peeled into vein shrimp so I can just take them out of the freezer, defrost them, and throw them into a dish. Um, but rice, beans, pasta, so you can take, you know, some of the easiest things are to take out pasta, I'll make a quick marinara sauce, it takes no time at all, and, um, you know, that's it, you know, but I already have the pasta and the sauce and everything ready to go, onions and garlic, and just have those things on hand. Um, don't overbuy, but have those things on hand. But if you have some basic techniques down, you can apply them over and over and over again to multiple different um, recipes or things you want to create at home. You just you've looked through Food Network, you've looked through Google, you've looked through everything, and you can't find a new recipe, and you just want to try to create something when you feel comfortable. It's a great a great thing. But as long as you have everything in your kitchen, you're going to be good to go. Yeah, I think that's great advice. I one of my favorite things lately, and I just did this only because I had the the staples in my house and I didn't have anything else, is just like simple brown rice pasta. Um, I um, put like garlic and olive oil and a little bit of parmesan, and that's it. And it's yeah. so good. It's so simple. It's very basic. I had everything in my house. Um, but I don't think I ever would have made it if I didn't have like all those staples in my house, right? Um, right. And it's now one of my favorite things uh, to make, uh, super easy, really not yeah. time consuming at all. Some of the best things, um, the most the tastiest things that we can make are simple. And yeah. uh, that's why I say it, it, it seems intimidating. Everyone thinks that they're going to have to, you know, I'm gonna start cooking and I'm gonna make a souffle, you know, like, no, that's not what you're gonna do. 
you know, your first time in the kitchen, you know, um, at least not for me, um, you know, start with this. There's very simple things that you can do, um, you know, and don't get discouraged because you're going to burn something or you're going to overcook something. It's really easy to overcook chicken. It's really easy to overcook fish um, or seafood. Um, you're going to have some things that didn't turn out so great, but you're going to have amazing stuff down the road if you keep trying. Um, it's like, yeah anything it's like a sport the more you practice the better you are yeah i love it i'm gonna keep practicing awesome well, you and e you and elam will uh you know keep working at it and use your sous chef in the kitchen with his plastic knife i am prepper yep yeah. with his little knife yeah. and he has his own little cutting board and it's super cute um so we yeah we definitely have fun in the kitchen yeah well, we're getting close to the end of our time, um, but um, if anyone's watching, they have any questions, feel free to put them in the chat. Um, but uh, otherwise, you know, it's been great talking about cooking. It's one of my favorite topics and conversations. I could talk about it all day. Um, I know I have all day to talk about it. I have to get back to life at the JCC and camp and carpool and all those fun things that we do. But um, Brett, yeah. was there anything else you wanted to throw in there about um, cooking and wellness or, you know, being in the kitchen? I don't think so. I think kind of just our overall message today is keep it simple, right? And right. Um, simple, make your life easier. Don't be afraid to, you know, try some new things um, and have fun with it. I agree. Well, Brad, um, thank you again for being with us on Wake Up and Get Wealthy. It's always great to see you. And, you, um, yeah, we will... We will see you next time. Sounds good. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. All right. Bye. Get wealthy, Bye. Dallas. <laughs> Get wealthy, Dallas.